people, what is up? We are back out here once again. Um, we have about 30 minutes to fish before this storm hits us because sadly a storm is rolling in on us. One fish on the stringer, thanks to Nolan. So I'm thinking this is gonna be our good trout right here. We're gonna do a little bit of a catch and cook for y'all. So thank you, Mr. Nolan. Stay tuned and maybe we'll get another one. Like I said, we only have about 30 minutes, but we're gonna try. So let's get after him. All right, guys, we just got out here. Passing up shallow onto the edge of this oyster. And I just hooked into a pretty decent trout and he jumped, took flight, spit the hook. I didn't really set it good. I thought I was stuck on the oyster. But no, trout up in about knee deep water. All right, guys, so we're sitting out here. Haven't caught anything. Jumped off one trout. Um, the weather radar said there was no rain tonight, nothing. As you can see, this is going for the future. We do have a storm moving in on us. I don't know if y'all can see that. Probably can. There's this huge cloud. It's right there and it moved in super quick. And it's supposed to, you know, rain pretty bad apparently. It looks like we have about 45 minutes until it rains. So we're going to keep fishing. Hopefully be able to pull something out before the storm. Little update. All right, no one just hooked up. Keep them low, keep them in the water, keep them in the water. That's a good trout. There you go, dude. That's a good one. Uh, last couple of casts. Yep. Got a bail out of here because of the storm. Making three more casts, and look at that. Hold him. Chill up, buddy. He's on the stringer, and look how he swallowed it, too. He wanted it. All right. We had the conditions we wanted tonight, besides the wind. We had the tide going out right at sunset. Fishing one of our favorite spots. It's pretty big. There's 15, so he's right there. Yeah, about 17. Yeah, and that's not even flat. Perfect. All right, doing our last cast out here. Then we're going to work our way back in. We just hear too much thunder. And the radar shows it being red. All right, people ask if we're worried about the sharks out here. Somebody asks us that, especially with fish on the stringer. In this particular spot, I'm more worried about the dolphins because they always come really close. All right, guys, check it out. The video is not over yet. We are back at the house right now. We got one trout in the bucket that no one caught. We had to leave because that storm was coming, like I said in the video. Um, pull the trout out of here. Boom, nice 17 incher. But yeah, we had to leave because the rain started coming. It started lightning a little bit and we don't mess with lightning when we're out there fishing. So here we are, we're gonna clean this one up and we're gonna throw a little catch and cook together for y'all. Stay tuned and if you wanna come over here, I'll show y'all how to clean it up. All right, so a trout's pretty easy. Uh, some people do it straight down the back. We're just gonna do it the simplest way, sharp knife, Hopefully, run it at an angle behind the gills, down until you feel the backbone, make it cut down. Then you just get in there, you turn your knife, and just start running it sideways down the backbone. And you're gonna get in the guts. Now you're gonna get, you're gonna hit this thing right here. I don't know what this is. I believe this is what do they call it? The uh, swim bladder or error or something like that. And that basically just keeps them straight up is what I've heard that is. So that is actually extremely hard to cut through. It's like gum. Like it's just crazy. So pull that out once you hit it and then it'll make it way easier. Keep running it down the backbone. Come all the way off. You don't need to worry about leaving it on. It's not that big of a deal. Flip it over. Same thing to this side. Definitely need to sharpen my knife. I've had this thing for like two years, only sharpened it once or twice. Right there is two flays. Pretty good. Missed a little bit of meat at the top, but it's not that big of a deal. We got enough off of there. Cut around those bones, run your finger in it. And it's hitting the side on the board. That is off. Now that right there is a completely boned out filet. All you gotta do, take your finger at the end, go down on it. This is when it gets a little tricky on the cooler, but It'll be okay. Once you make your cut down, you wanna straighten your knife out. Still leave just a tad bit of an angle on it. Grab the fish from the back 
and literally just pull the fish, don't even move the knife. Just pull the skin away from it. That right there is a boneless, skinless trout filet. We're gonna do the next one and we'll see you on the kitchen. All right, so we are back here in the kitchen. We got the fish all cleaned up. One speckled trout, like I said, and because we only have one today, we're gonna be making fish cakes. So I'd like to also say, every time I make fish cakes, they're never the same. Um, like today, all we're using is onion, celery, and then our assorted spices, which are garlic powder, Hungarian paprika, Tony Saturdays, once again, black pepper and Italian seasoning. And then we have breadcrumbs, panko breadcrumbs, and these uh, just plain breadcrumbs. So yeah, like I said, they're never exactly the same, but they're always gonna turn out good. And uh, you can just put whatever you want in them if you're gonna make these at home, whatever you feel is gonna be good in it, it'll be good. Let's get to it. We're gonna throw in our vegetables, get them sauteing. And then once these are done, we're gonna pull these out. And we're doing only one pan today. So we're gonna pull these out and put the fish in here. One thing to note on cooking the fish is that some people say you should boil it. Whenever you make fish cakes, you boil it, then take it out and then crunch it up. I don't think you need to do all that. It's gonna be fine. We're just gonna sear it in a pan or blacken it or whatever we want and then crumble it up in our hands and cut it up or whatever and then add it to the fish cakes. Mush them all together and that's really it. So yep, we're gonna let these saute and get everything else ready. All right, so to make the rest of our fish cake, the size of the fish and the vegetables, I'm gonna take some breadcrumbs. I like panko, but we don't have enough, I think. So we can dump in the whole bag of panko. And I actually really like the garlic or Italian panko, whatever it's called, for this, only for the fish cakes. Or for stuffing flour. So panko, and then we're gonna top it off with some normal breadcrumbs. I don't know how much we're gonna need, but probably quite a bit. Okay, then we're just gonna start adding our seasoning in it. So, Italian, boom, all of it because there's barely any in there. Like I said, no specific amount. Whatever you like, you add more of. If you don't like it, you don't add it. Black pepper. Good healthy dose of black pepper. Tony Chachers. <laughs> no one likes this stuff, so we're gonna add quite a bit. It's very salty though. Probably about that much. Hungarian paprika, although there's probably some in the Tony Saturdays. Oh, and I'm about to sneeze. All right. And lastly, garlic powder. Bunches of that. All right, now that we have all the ingredients in here, everything's mixed up, all the spices. Vegetables are almost done sauteing. We're gonna take an egg. Boom. Crack an egg in there. We're probably gonna need another one, but we'll mix one egg in there. Put that in the sink for now. Yeah, we're definitely gonna need another egg and we might even put in some melted butter. But yeah, we're just adding some stuff to get it thicker, kind of make it like a paste. And then, we add the rest. So the vegetables are done, we're just letting them cool a second before we throw them in. But while we're waiting, we're gonna season up the fish, so. Just like in our last one. Same seasoning, 20 saturated once again. That's quite a bit, but it's okay because this is also going to season up the whole entire cake. Mix around, dump the excess off. All right, vegetables are cooled, throwing them in. All right, so we got our veggies in here. We're just going to add them and stir them in. A little bit of butter from the veggies will also help get some moisture in these. We might have to add another egg later or whatever, just depending. Now we got our butter heated up over here, and we're gonna lay the fish in, so. Same pan. One fish. And other half of one fish. <laughs> Let those cook. And then, whenever they're done, add them to our cakes, make the cakes, throw them back in some oil for about a minute, and we're ready to eat. All right, we just took our fish off, extremely good. Um, we might eat it before it even makes it into the bowl. But no, okay, so we let it cool. The next step is to leave a like down below, leave a comment, and let us know what you put in your fish cakes, and then make sure you are subscribed. Now we are going to cut up our fish, or just, you can use your hands, you can pull it apart, or you can just use a fork and kind of just flake it up. It doesn't have to be perfect, 
but this is a good time for you to check for bones, everything like that. So cut that up. I'm just gonna do that to all of them. Like I said, make sure there's no bones in here. Just make sure it is nice and mushed up, or not mushed up, but pulled apart. And then we throw it in our bowl, everything else. And this is the fun part. We get to get dirty and use our hands. So make sure you have your hands washed. I washed mine like 10 times tonight. All right, now we're gonna toss it all around in here. Everything well mixed. As you can see, it's mixed up. All you do is you take one, and we have a lot of stuff and not a lot of breading. Make it into a ball in your hand, take about that much. Ball it up. And you'll know if you need more egg or if you need more of anything. If it's not sticking, ours stuck pretty well. And then we're just gonna lay it back. Oh. Then we're just gonna lay it back on our plate. Some people say to put them in the freezer for a little bit and let them stick together. I'm not really too worried about that. I've never done that before. So once we do this, we're gonna make a bunch of these, put them on the plate, and then we're gonna throw them in the hot oil that we have heating up over there. We'll get back to y'all. All right, so we take our little trout patty, hamburger things, fish cakes. Got our oil heated up over here. <clears throat> One thing to note is that you're not really cooking these because the trout, the fish is already cooked. So all we're doing is just laying them in there and getting them crispy on the outside. You take one, drop them in. Just gonna fill the pan. Whoop. Whoop. This one split on us. We actually ended up add, <clears throat> adding another egg. So it was four eggs for that much. Wow, that is splitting really bad because they weren't staying together well. Like I said, y'all will know when you start making them. How much to add. So there we go. Five of them in there. We're gonna flip them after about 45 seconds to a minute on each side and then we're gonna be ready to eat. So check it out people. They're done. As you can see we're setting them in foil right here. A little kitchen hack. No more paint plates and uh, paper towels. Just take some oil, crunch it up in your hand and then set it for greasy food. You just set your greasy food on there because it's gonna run off better off of that instead of all soaking into the napkin and it's still greasy on the bottom. It just kind of holds the food up and then all the grease will run off. So those are done. We're gonna add in our next batch. That's it. The next batch is going in. This is the one that keeps falling apart on us. Get away from each other. Right, so we're gonna make a little sauce to go with our fish cakes. This is definitely just optional. They're good by themselves or good on a sandwich too. But we're gonna take a little bit of mayonnaise. We're kind of making a tartar sauce, but kind of tartar sauce. Okay, mayonnaise. And we're gonna take a little bit of sweet relish. Kind of dab of that in there. A little bit more. Mm, that much. All right, then we're gonna take Horseradish, which is gonna give it a little bit of a kick, kind of like a cocktail sauce. All right, horseradish, about that much. A little dab, dab, dab. Salt, black pepper. And we don't have dill, so instead of dill, we're gonna use just some fresh parsley to give some color, a little bit of flavor. Or not fresh parsley, but these little canned parsleys. And now ketchup is optional, but we're not gonna add ketchup in this one. That's gonna be it. Give it a good start. And about, when it looks like that, you're ready to eat. Boom. And this right here is what your final product is going to be. All right, so I just cut this one open right here. You can see how it looks. Perfectly done on the inside. We're just gonna go hands for this. A little bit of sauce, a little bit more sauce. Go for it. Mmm, amazing. That right there is super simple. It may not look like it because we do all this stuff, but if we weren't recording, this would probably take us a total of 15 minutes to do all this. So definitely recommend trying that. We're gonna get Nolan in here to taste it. And then we might go get my brother and see if we can snag him in here for a little review. He's a little camera shy, but we're gonna try. All right, we got my brother right here. We managed to snag him out of his room. 
Um, okay, so he's gonna try one, and then he's gonna try this sauce or the ketchup. He's gonna. No one insists that the ketchup is the move. We're gonna try this sauce. He's gonna go for it. All right, honest opinion. You have to rate it first of all, one through ten, without okay. anything, and then you tell us. And well, I well, want to tell you. With the sauce, I give it eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. That's pretty yeah. good. All right, now try, try it without the sauce or with ketchup. Without, you went without. Solid move. Mm. Probably nine out of ten. All right, so he said eight out of ten with the sauce, yeah. sauce, nine out of ten without it. But do you like it? Yeah. Okay, and I'm gonna give it a. Honestly, I'm gonna give it like a six point five. It's really good. Don't get me wrong, but it's not as uh, complex as our other ones and I like that like I like you know the separate like the sauce like the last one the spaghetti with the fish but this one is still really good and if you're like short on time it's super easy to make so we're gonna get Nolan in here he's yes. gonna try it all right guys as y'all can see we polished these off right here that's an empty plate um Nolan's gonna give you his opinion on it right now what do you rate it I gave it a 7-3 a 7-3 because uh, it was it was good but it just wasn't as good as the other catch and cooks we did Especially the last one. Yeah, the last one was the best yes. one. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. And follow us on Instagram at... Before underscore outdoors. Yep. And uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have, like always, thank you all so much. Until next time, peace.